The Cowboys just got dominated by the 49ers and now they're going to play the Chargers on Monday Night Football. This is a crucial game for both of these teams at this point in the season. So make sure to like and subscribe if you do enjoy the content and let's get right into it, man. Talking about the Cowboys heading into this game. So at this point in the season, we don't really have a good grasp of who the Cowboys are as a team. They blew out the Giants. 40 to nothing in week one and everyone hopped on the bandwagon specifically because of how well that defense played seven sacks two interception with deron bland getting an interception touchdown and scoring more points on that one play than the entire giants team did in that entire game but it should be noted that dak only had 143 yards passing in that game then moving on to week two they beat the jets 30 to 10 obviously without aaron Rodgers. this was when zach wilson had his first start of the season they picked off zach wilson three times micah parson had two sacks osa adigizua had one sack and dak prescott had his best game of the season so far throwing 255 yards and two touchdowns and cd lamb had his best game of the season with 11 catches for 143 yards. This was easily the Cowboys' best performance so far on offense. So then we move on to week three, where everybody is expecting them to blow out the Cardinals because Cowboys have an elite defense and an offense with an above average quarterback, right? An above average running back in Tony Pollard and an elite wide receiver in CeeDee Lamb. Nobody is arguing that. And also because the Cardinals are basically in contention to get the number one overall pick because. They want Caleb Williams, right? That's probably the best thing for their franchise is to lose basically every single game this season. But they lost. Cowboys lost. This was pretty surprising to everybody that follows the NFL. At Even if you're a casual NFL fan, you, you, you looked at this game and you thought, what is wrong with the Cowboys? It was mostly, they mostly lost because the defense had no answer for the Cardinals rushing attack with James Conner, but also because Josh Dobbs, the quarterback, went 17 of 21 and 189 yards and one touchdown. Dak Prescott again did not have a great game and Cowboys fans are starting to grow more and more frustrated with him because they already didn't love him when they were winning and blowing out teams like the Giants and the Jets. And now we move on to week four, where they go on to dominate the Patriots in the same fashion that they won in those first two weeks by playing great defense and getting two interceptions. And again, man, Deron Bland getting another pick six, scoring more points than the entire Patriots team did in this game off of that one play. Dak Prescott also, though, was able to bounce back. Didn't throw an interception in this game, but he wasn't the reason that the Cowboys won that game. Their defense was just suffocating Mac Jones all night, and they only allowed 53 yards rushing. And so that brings us to last night, where the Cowboys were taking on the 49ers. Everyone was kind of expecting the 49ers to take this game, but it was expected to be competitive because the Cowboys are one of the top teams in the NFC roster wise and we kind of thought that they were one of the top teams because of what they showed so far in the season and now you look at them and you think what's going on because cowboys just got eviscerated by the 49ers and dak prescott threw three interceptions on only 24 attempts that is an interception every eight times that he threw the ball they couldn't throw or run the ball this entire game. Brock Purdy threw four touchdowns and the Niners were running the ball at will with 170 yards rushing. This was just a nightmare scenario for the Cowboys. Everything that could have possibly gone wrong did go wrong and even more. So that brings us to the question, who are the Cowboys at this point in the season? They blew out the Jets, the Giants, and the Patriots who have historically been a pretty good team. They still got Bill Belichick as the coach, but all of those teams right now in this season, they have a combined record of four and 11, but they lost to the one and four Cardinals and the five and oh Niners. It's confusing, right? At this point, the Cowboys are just inconsistent and that's because of their poor quarterback play and poor coaching. A lot of what they're trying to do on offense are quick passes and slants, things like that. And the deep ball really has not been there a lot. And 
we'll get into that a little bit later, but Cowboys fans were glad when Kellen Moore was gone. But now Dak Prescott is off to the worst start of his career. The Cowboys on offense are averaging five points less than last season with Kellen Moore. And the Chargers this season with Kellen Moore are averaging five points more than last season. Now that right there is the Kellen Moore effect taking place in both Dallas and Los Angeles right now. Also, the Cowboys need to target CeeDee Lamb more. He has only received double digit targets once this season. And when he did, it was when he balled out against the Jets. He had nine double digit target games last season. So it's not a matter of him not being open or anything like that. It's just a matter of him not being utilized the way that he should, honestly, and that falls on coaching, like I said. Now they don't have Kellen Moore, and now they're starting to look worse on offense. Mike McCarthy said that they were going to, uh, that you should expect the Cowboys to rush the ball a lot more than they did last season, and this season you're not really seeing that as much as he promised for him. I think if you look back on it, the reason that CeeDee Lamb was targeted as much as he was is because uh, Kellen Moore knew that CeeDee Lamb was the best target that the Cowboys have on offense. And so he was trying to utilize him and make plays just for him on that offense, which is exactly what you want to do as an offensive play caller. You want to make plays designed specifically for your best and your elite playmakers. And now that Kellen Moore is on the Chargers, you look at Keenan Allen. I mean, he has 43 targets through four games so far. So that means that he is averaging more than 10 targets a game. I mean, you need to get the ball to your playmakers. And it seems like the Cowboys are, are just literally content to not do that. It's weird. The best part of this Cowboys team is their defense. They have a great pass rush and their coverage unit benefits from that because they are both top three in the NFL as graded by PFF. Where the defense suffers though is the run game and if austin eckler is back in this game then that is going to be the game plan that kellen moore puts into place in week one the only game that we had austin eckler the chargers ran for 233 yards and averaged 5.8 yards per carry that was easily like the best rushing performance that any team had so far this season 233 yards man and then add on top of that justin herbert wasn't scrambling as much in week one look at these past two weeks justin herbert has been scrambling and running the ball to get first downs when he's under pressure he is really good at improvising and using his legs and we're seeing that more and more throughout the season so when he needs to to pick up a first down on a third and short when he's passing the ball and nobody is open even if austin eckler can't go i would still expect that to be the game plan rushing the ball with heavy targets to keenan allen because the cowboys are now without their number one quarterback or cornerback in trayvon diggs and nobody on the cowboys in their secondary can cover keenan allen throughout the game I know a lot of Cowboys fans are going to say, hey, we got Stephon Gilmore. He's a great corner. Listen, Keenan Allen, he's different. He's an elite wide receiver. Stephon Gilmore and nobody on that Cowboys secondary, they cannot cover that man. Now, Justin Herbert is probably going to be pressured a lot by this Cowboys defensive line, specifically Micah Parsons. That dude is different. But Justin Herbert is one of the best quarterbacks under pressure, and he is so, so freaking good at maneuvering in the pocket. He is so poised, he can take a hit. I mean, there was one play in the game against the Raiders where Max Crosby was trying to drag him down for like three straight seconds. And Justin Herbert is standing up, still looking for a guy in the back of the end zone. He couldn't find him. He ended up going down, but still he was standing up. I mean, it was like Ben Roethlisberger-esque the way that he was standing up and taking on that defender. But as long as the Chargers offensive line doesn't allow pressure immediately on every and then he goes and runs for a first down or he throws into the blitz and gets a, a wide open Keenan Allen in a flat route something like that now on defense the Chargers really need to pressure Dak Prescott and make him uncomfortable so that he makes bad decisions and they win the turnover battle I would expect Tuli Tui Pelotu and Asante Samuel Jr. to have pretty good else on the team as a rookie and even though he might not get those sack numbers, he is definitely the reason that other guys get those sacks. 
and Asante because he does a great job of reading the eyes of the quarterback and trust like that game winning interception against the Raiders in the red zone. And I think uh, Dak Prescott is the exact kind of quarterback that guys like Asante Samuel Jr. love to play against because they can read them like a third grade reading level book and they have a much higher chance at getting an interception. Now, the big thing that concerns me is that the Cowboys just got embarrassed on Sunday night football. So are they going to come back out with a vengeance on Monday night football against the Chargers? Or is this just going to be more of the same that we saw against the 49ers? Either way, this is a really pivotal game for both of these teams to make a run and contend later on in the season. Let me know who you guys got winning this game in the comments and why. And also, if you didn't see this video, I broke down the Chargers defensive performance against the Raiders. Khalil Mack had a game wrecker.